When you first start using the Unity game engine, you learn about this cool property called camera.main that gives you easy access to the main camera in your game. However, once you start getting a little bit more experienced with Unity, you learn that camera.main is actually quite inefficient and you should avoid calling it frequently in your code. But that all changes today. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about why you can use camera.main as much as you like, along with other new features coming to the latest version of the Unity game engine. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna be telling you how you can get a chance to win an Oculus Quest 2 VR kit simply by participating in the Unity 2020 beta. And if you do find today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button and also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about new features coming to the Unity game engine. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. So Unity version 2020.2 has been available as a beta release for the past couple weeks now, and it brings a whole bunch of new changes to the Unity editor. And so I'm not going to be going over all the new features coming to the Unity game engine, I'm just going to be focusing on the ones that I find most exciting, which are a lot of the programmer type focused improvements that they're bringing to the game engine. And again, all these features that I'm going to be talking about today are available for you to experiment with right now by downloading the Unity 2020.2 beta. And this beta version is supposedly going to be a full released version by the end of the year, and they do expect Unity 2020 to go in long term support by March of next year. So anyways, let's start off with camera.main. So first I should talk about why camera.main was bad in the first place. So camera.main was quote unquote bad to begin with because under the hood it used something known as find game object with tag. And essentially what this does is it looks through all the objects in your entire hierarchy of your game and it checks to see if it has the main camera tag. Now this is more or less fine if you have a pretty small project with you know just a couple of objects in the scene and maybe you're just calling camera.main a couple of times, but this becomes a real big problem when you start having hundreds or even thousands of objects in your game and you're frequently calling this camera.main. So a lot of times the easiest thing to do would just be to cache that into a variable in your script and then you can use that variable whenever you need to access the main camera. However, it's not really immediately obvious that using camera.main is a bad thing. You know, when I first started using Unity, I thought it was just basically a direct reference to the main camera. And so Unity has made some changes that that's pretty much how it works now. Basically when you use camera.main, it returns a list of all the objects that have that main camera tag. And so when you actually want to find the main camera, the one that's active, it basically just looks through that list and then it returns the main camera pretty much instantaneously. So from now on, it is safe to use camera.main again. By using the editor iteration profiler, you're able to get a breakdown of what things are taking what amount of time when you go to play and test your game. Recently, I created a video where I show you how to enter play mode more quickly if you're using Unity's entity component system. And now with this editor iteration profiler, you can basically get a breakdown of how long each step in that process is taking so you can learn about where you can maybe make some optimizations to again improve your workflow. And another related feature is the zero change rebuilds for IL2CPP. And basically with this feature, if you don't change your code in between builds, the whole IL2CPP conversion is no longer going to happen. So this is going to you know, save you time when you're iterating through builds if you're only changing things like um, you know, models and prefabs and things of that nature. For some more coding specific improvements, you can now define a root namespace on a per assembly basis. So anytime that you create a script that is associated with a specific assembly, it's automatically gonna put all your code within that namespace that you defined. Unity is also adding support for all of c -sharp 8's new features except for default interface methods. Some of my favorite c -sharp 8 features are switch expressions, which basically removes the need for repetitive code, such as adding you know, case and break and all these curly braces. Also using indices and ranges, it's going to be much easier to access single elements or ranges of elements from collections such as arrays. And the last one that I'm I'm particularly excited about is the null coalescing assignment. So basically this only assigns values to a variable if that variable is null. If that variable has a value, it's not going to assign things to it. So I think that's just kind of a cool and little useful tool to have. Again, I will leave some links down in the documentation so you can see all the new C Sharp 8 features. Also, time.deltaTime is getting some stability improvements to basically make this delta time value 
more consistent across frames, especially when your game is running at a fixed frame rate. Right now, it's only going to be available for these platforms. However, it's going to be coming to all the other platforms very soon. And then a big one that Unity has been talking about is Unity Safe Mode. So essentially with Unity Safe Mode, if you open your project and there are some compiler errors, it's going to prompt you to enter into Unity Safe Mode. Now with Unity Safe Mode, you can essentially go and correct the errors in your code base before the whole rest of the project is loading. So you don't have to like, you know, wait for the scene to load and wait for all the lighting stuff to happen. You can basically just correct the compiler errors. And then once you've done that, then you can proceed into Unity as normal. I hope this is something that you won't need to use very often, but it is nice to have it there in case you do need it. And then finally, one that I'm very excited about is that Unity has actually exposed the profiler statistics as runtime APIs. So this essentially means that you can create heads up displays that shows you know, the exact system resources that are currently being utilized in your game, not only in the editor, but also when you're deploying the game on a target device. So this is going to be extremely useful to monitor the performance of your game. And using these APIs, you can also build out custom tools. So for example, if you know memory usage hits a certain percentage, you can have something pop up on the screen warning the user that the you know memory is at a certain usage. This is probably not something that you wanna have in a final build of your game, but it's going to be extremely useful for testing and figuring out you know where are the kind of bottlenecks in your game. So anyways, those are some of the features that I'm most excited for coming to the Unity game engine as of version 2020.2. Let me know which ones you're most excited for down in the comment section below. And before I let you go, I just want to let you know how you can get a chance to win an Oculus Quest 2 VR kit by participating in the Unity 2020.2 beta. So essentially all you need to do to participate in this contest is to submit a unique bug report to Unity's bug tracking system before November 19th, 2020. And they consider it a unique bug report if you're the first person to report on a specific bug that you found in the Unity 2020.2 beta. And you can submit as many bug reports as you want over the next month or so for your chance to win one of eight Oculus Quest 2 VR kits. I'll leave uh, some more information down in the description below so you can figure out what exactly you need to do to your bug report submission so you can be considered to enter this contest. Anyways, that's going to wrap up today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots of more videos about new features coming to the Unity game engine. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.